and welcome to my YouTube channel. So this morning I thought we've just had Storm Kathleen and it's still really, really windy. So I thought I'd come out and do a wee tour round the Firth of the Fourth. So my first wee stop is here, which is Blackness Castle. Join me and let's see where this journey takes us this morning. I'm just having a wee wander around the beach. So I've taken two or three wee shots of the castle as I come onto the beach there. And if those images have turned out, I'll share those images with you now. Right, so what I'm trying to do here is I've got the sun directly on my right hand side. But what I'm trying to do is use some of these boulders in front of me as uh, focal, focal points of interest. I'm just trying to get a wider scene with the castle. Um, Blackness Castle was actually built in 1440. It was actually built on the site of an original fort. So it's a castle of huge significance here in the Firthy Fourth. And also one of the famous films, the Mary Queen of Scots, was filmed here as well. So what I'll do is I'm going to take two or three different images. I'm struggling because the sun is immediately on my right hand side. Because I'm going to have quite a lot of shadows on the back of these rocks. But I might be able to lift them up. So what I'm going to do is a few bracket expo exposures so that I can get my highlights and my shadows and then I can pull them in together. I'll take two or three shots with different compositions in this area while the tide's out and then I'm going to see if I can walk further down the beach and see if there's any views that direction towards Kincardine. But I'll take these images and then I'll share these images with you now. All right, so I'm going to try <laughs> quite a tricky shot because I'm facing into the sun. And similar to the shot that I did when I went to Black Rock Cottage, where you're trying to look for depth, but you're also trying to change your compositional height as well in your images. So here I've got a whole bunch of seaweed that's sitting on top of the rock. And what I'm trying to do is get the seaweed in focus. Then I'll have to take a shot where I've got the, mi the mid-ground in focus and then I'll take a shot where I've got the background in focus. But the trick here is going to be the light. So what I'm going to have to do is do three exposure compensation shots for the foreground, the mid-ground and then the distance and then I'll bring them all together. I'll probably do a HDR merge in Photoshop and uh, if that works out, I'll share that image with you now. There's a saltire flag just flying over there in that pier. So I've taken a traditional kind of landscape shot, which I've taken there, but I just thought I'm looking for something a wee bit different. So I've got an edge of the harbour wall with seaweed on it. And then what I've done is I've turned the camera over into portrait and I'll have the flag just peeking up outside the uh, seaweed wall. And the seaweed wall might add a wee bit of foreground interest. So what I'll do is I'll share that, just that landscape shot I took photo with you now. Then I'll share the portrait photo that I've just taken just now. And then hopefully you can let me know in the comments, is the portrait shot a better composition than the landscape shot? I don't know, but it'll be interesting to find out what you think. And when I've finished, I'll share these images with you now. So I'm just going to walk further along the beach. It's a wee bit soft on foot at the moment, so I'm going to walk up to the, the dry beach and just walk along. I don't know if I can get up to the castle from the other end. It's been a long, long time since I've been here. But what I'll do is I'll just turn the camera around and then you can see where I'm walking. So I'll just walk up to that shale and then we'll catch back when I can find an area of interest. Right, well, I, I'm kind of struggling because if I show you all the footprints in the beach, we're kind of moving from sand to mud, and it's I can't I can't really go that far out. But what I've seen, what I've tried to get is, if I turn the camera around, you'll see I've got quite a nice view of the castle here. I've got the old castle pier on the left-hand side, 
and there's quite a nice light on the castle coming through the sun. So what I'll do is, there's no way, I can't see any other way out of the beach, so I'll have to go back to the way I came to then walk along to the castle, because what I'd like to do is, once I've taken these shots, I'll go up to the castle, we'll go inside the grounds, and I'll see if we can look up towards the fourth road and fourth rail bridges. But I'll take these images, and I'll share them with you now, and then we'll catch up when we're inside the castle. Well, I'm just getting closer to the castle, just coming up to the entrance. I'll turn the camera around and you can see where I'm walking. It's uh, getting windier and windier as I get closer to the water. So what I'll do is I'll keep walking through here. I get to the end, I'm hoping the sun's not going to spoil my shot. And uh, I'm going to find a wee location and I'll catch back with you there. So there we go, so what we know as Blackness Castle was called Crichton's Castle and Admiral George Crichton built Blackness in the 1400s after the 8th Earl of Douglas destroyed his tower house at Banton. So amazing, I mean the history in this place, Oliver Cromwell tried to besiege the castle. Oh, it's got immense history and it's an absolutely stunning condition. I'm just going to walk over to the, there's a hole in the side there. My, my ultimate destination is the edge of that wall. But I'm just going to have a wee nosy through this hole just to see if it explains what it is. It's just site of original entrance in the 15th century and it was blocked up in Queen Mary of Scots reign in 1542. Interesting. It's amazing the landscape that we have today and the changes over the hundreds of years to the landscape. So we've got well-kept gardens here and it's beautiful cut grass. You could just imagine in the 1400s this being a whole muddy quagmire and rough terrain. Right, oh, we've got a nice picture of the fourth bridges with an amazing sunny glow. So, hmm, I might need the long lens. So I'll try the 2070. If it's too harsh with the highlights, I'll switch over and I'll catch back with you in a wee minute. Right, I've taken shots with the 2070. I've only taken two or three because I don't know how harsh those highlights are. And if those images have worked out, I'll share those one or two images with you now. Now I've switched to the 70 to 200 lens and I'm zooming straight in. But the beauty about the 70 to 200 lens is I've got a hood on it. And that hood will give me some kind of protection of the lens flare that I would get for the sun. And the sun, I mean right now, the sun is so, so harsh. It's, to be fair, it's right above us. And uh, it's blinding actually, it's really blinding to the eye. So I'll take two or three shots. I'm really hoping that these turn out because from what I can see through the glare of the sun, it looks like a real misty effect of the fourth rail bridges with a kind of sepia type tone in the background with a, with a haze in the distance. So I'm really hoping these turn out. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pick out two or three different items that I can take photos of with the 70 to 200 on. And then when I finish taking all these images, I'll share them with you now. So I'm finished here at the lovely, beautiful Blackness Castle. 
what I'm going to do is there was a sign as I was walking along the road that said to beach. Never been there before. Haven't followed the path. So I'm going to follow the path just to see where it takes me. And when I get there, I'll share that with you. All right, so I've walked up that grassy hill. The castle's over there on the right. Some pretty cool trees here, actually. There's an old ruin there. Don't know what the ruin is. But if you can see that tower on the hill in the distance, that's the house of the bins at South Queen's Ferry. But what caught my eye is there's a nice wee composition here where you've got these trees and then the fourth bridges. So I might walk a wee bit closer and, uh, well, you never know, it's opportunistic. I'll, uh, the tide's out, so there's not really that much to see. But I'll, uh, I'll take a shot and if it works out, <laughs> I'll share that with you now. Sussed out what this old ruin is. It's called Dovecot. It's a pigeon house built in the 17th century to provide eggs and fresh meat to the castle. And it may have suffered from the English army who camped here during the 1650 siege of Blackness. So, there you go. Interesting stuff. Right, I'm going to take a wee wander down to the beach. <laughs> I'm going to take a wee wander down to the beach just to see if there's anything interesting because if I don't go down and I walk away, I'll just kick myself that I should have went down for a wander. So let's catch up at the bottom. Well, I'm glad they did come down. <laughs> it just pays to have a wee rosy. I'm sure this will look absolutely stunning when uh, the tide is in. But I've got quite a nice three-quarter view of uh, Blackness Castle here with the water. I'm using the grass as a leading line all the way up from the bottom right up to the top left. And then that kind of spreads out to the castle and then we've got all the trees and the rocks in the foreground. So it might make a, a nice image. Um, yeah, I think this would be nice when the tide's kind of halfway in. So it'd be good to come back to this location now I've found it. And just see, I can imagine with the storms, because there's a lot of debris all the way right up. In fact, I'll pick the camera up and you can see. So there's a lot of debris right along, scattered along the edge of the shore here in the grass. But when you look further up to where I walked down, the debris is right along the edge. So from the recent storms yesterday, it must have been pretty violent here. In fact, now I know that, this might be quite a good spot to come to because if I'll show, turn around and show you this, there's actually a wall. So you can just imagine with the sea coming in being as harsh as it is, or as it was, you'd get some cracking wave effects that come smashing up over that wall. So that might be quite nice. Right, I'm going to finish here. I'll share the images that I take here with you. And then I think we'll move on and find a new location. I've just stopped at North Queen's Ferry for shots of the Fourth Road Bridge. Look at that. It's absolutely stunning, but it's blown an absolute hooli. So this will be fast shutter speed. This won't be slow shutter speed because I'll need to keep hold of the camera. Um, but what I'll do is I'll work my way down. The sun's right above me, but hopefully I can get some shots with the sun not in the image because it's going behind clouds every now and again. So what I'll do is I'll take two or three images and then I'll share the first set of images with you now. Whoa, I'll tell you, it's brisk, that wind. I did a panoramic shot there, so I'm hoping that turned out. And if the panoramic shot turned out, I'll share that with you now. I'm 
expecting to get the the brunt of the wind when I get down here out of the shade of this hedge. Um, I want to shoot to the right towards the fourth road bridge and the Queen's Ferry crossing. Let's see how far we can get. Oh, there's a nice bit of wood there that could be a leading line. There you go, that might be quite nice foreground interest. Right, let's give that a bash. I'll take two or three images here and then what I'll do is I'll share those images with you when I'm finished. Oh, right, so it's blown an absolute hooly here. Um, I'm just going to turn round. There's the fourth rail bridge. I've just taken a shot where I've used the end of this pier as a kind of leading line, and I've got the seagulls in the end, so hopefully that's turned out. So I'll do, I've done a portrait, and I'll do a kind of wider landscape type shot. And as I just scan round, as you'll see, it's absolutely beautiful here this morning. It's amazing after a few days or a whole week of rain and storms yesterday, it is blowy here, so hopefully we can catch, catch some of the waves, although I thought the waves were going to be a lot taller than they actually are, so that's a wee bit disappointing. But I'm going to take two or three more images here, and uh, from this viewpoint I'll share those with you now. That wind is absolutely freezing. It's cutting and I left my gloves in the car. Right, I'm going to get back to the car and uh, we'll go and find another location. So I stopped at a place called Lime Kilns. Um, it's really, really windy. So if I turn the camera around, uh, uh, you can see how windy it really is. Um, so what I'm going to do in this area is because the sound has been disrupted, I've either forgot to put the mic on or the wind's playing havoc with the mic. But what I'll do is, I'm walking down the beach, I'm looking for areas where I can find compositions. What I'm really looking for is the waves being blown against the rocks. So what I'll do is, I'll take some of these shots and I'll share the images that I take here with you now. The wind's getting worse and worse, I'll show you the sand. The wind's that strong, it's blown the sand over the beach. So I'm just getting a wee bit closer here to see if I can get more shots of the, the waves hitting the rocks. Wow, this is really, really strong. I'll just turn the camera around. So I'm hoping I can maybe get a couple of these shots here. But what I'll do is, I'll put the camera down so I can use my, my big lens with two hands. Any pictures I take here, I'll share them with you now. Job of the harbour. I've took hundreds of shots there. Hopefully we've got at least five or six waves and they've worked out. I work up the top, it's getting really, really blustery, and uh, I'll show you where I'm walking. All right, so if I just walk up through this gap in the seaweed, 
and then up through this wall. Hoopla! Let's see what sights we get. There's a wall there, so we might be able to take shelter there. Amazing view up towards Grangemouth, right at the very end there on the horizon. And then we've got the fourth bridges straight ahead. It's pretty, pretty wild, I must say. Um, if we go further down, look at the harbour wall. Yep, this is Lime Kilns. Absolutely beautiful wee town. I've actually never visited the actual Lime Kilns themselves. We'll do that on a quieter day. I'm just going to move forward to the fence. Honestly, the camera can't sense this, but the wind is just pushing me. Oh, wow. So it's pretty wild. What I'll do is I'll move behind that wall and then we'll get a wee bit of shelter from the wind. Well, as you can see from the footage that I'm showing you, I sat down behind that wall and uh, to take shelter for the wind. Although the wind was coming around the wall, it was absolutely horrendous. But uh, I obviously got so flustered because of the wind, I forgot to press the button and I didn't record the ending that I thought I had recorded. So this is the ending of the video. So here's hoping we can make a good video of this. I really hope you like it. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that will let you know the next time I post a video. So thanks very much for watching and here's to the next video.